When we're measuring resistance with a digital multimeter, we usually want to remove the component from the system. So what I've done, I selected something that's fairly easy to get to so I can film for you. There's a vacuum solenoid back here or a vacuum switching valve. It's designed to allow vacuum to flow through the valve when it's activated. And then once it's deactivated, the vacuum will stop. So unplug the connector, which I've done already. And then we want to measure both the terminals, only two terminals on there. It's just a, a coil of wire in there that makes the solenoid function. And we want to measure the resistance of that coil of wire. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our leads are in the ohm setting. And then the common is obviously in the common port. And then we're going to set the meter here to ohms. And we've got it in auto range right now. Anytime you see your ohm meter in OL, um, just means it's kind of out of limits. There's a, you have no continuity whatsoever. There's nothing reading. So if I touch these meter leads together, you can see it drops all the way down to zero, basically 0 0.2 ohms, which is really nothing. Um, could be resistance even in just in the leads or whatever. So nothing there. We always like to check our resistance before I do an actual test on a component. I like to put the leads together, just make sure that I've got zero ohms. And then we can go ahead and put one of these on each terminal. Okay, so if we look here, we've got 29.1 ohms across that solenoid. So we've got some resistance in there. It's in the range for this particular part. And if it were zero or if it read OL would mean there was a break in the coil somewhere, somewhere in the windings, we had an open circuit. If it was zero, I would know we had a short circuit. In other words, it, something inside had bypassed the coil of wire. The longer the spool of the wire is, usually the more resistance you're going to have in there. That's how these solenoids work.